Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. So if you're new here, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for new content. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Strata. Strata is the framework that creates a bridge between your iOS app and your Rails app, which allows you to easily create native buttons that control things in your Rails app, and so much more than that. Endless possibilities to create it. Because you have this bridge now, where you literally click a button in the Rails app, send a message over to your iOS app and do something. Like think about the possibilities there. I hope you guys are excited. Let's get right into it. To get started, I'm gonna create a new Rails app. So I'll just type in Rails new in the terminal and I'll put the name of our app. I'll just call it Strata submit, I guess. And then for other options, I'll just set the CSS framework to use Tailwind by doing dash C Tailwind. Uh, but that's optional i just like it because it'll look a little bit prettier right off the bat all right now that the command has run our app is set up so i can just cd into here and we can start the server by typing bin slash dev and with the server started we now have the rails app running on localhost colon 3000 so if we go there in the browser we'll see we have our rails app and the logo is right here so everything looks good next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to add a model so we can test with this all right, so what I'll do is I'll go into the terminal and I'll do a Rails G scaffold for a post. I'll give it a title, a body of type rich text, and then we can also do an image type attachment. I'll run this. Then I'll do a Rails DB migrate to migrate the database. And finally, restart the server. Now we still don't see anything on here because we need to set the root of application. But if we were to go to post, slash post in the URL. We'll see that we have this nice post page and we can create a new post. Oh, and we're getting this error about action text because I forgot since we're using action text, I need to run the action text installer. So we'll go to the console, type in Rails action text, colon install, and then migrate the database. Now we have everything set up for action text and active storage. Now we can restart the server. And now you see that we already have this nice uh, setup and it's already mobile responsive too. So that's pretty nice. You see it's uh, well, this would already look okay on the app So if we're going to create our first post First post hit This is a sweet rails app and then if I want to do an image I could do that too. I probably have some images rails logo All right, we can create post and then you'll see this is what the it looks like with the scaffold so we do have the image here, but we're not displaying it. We just have a link to it. So I'll probably change that real quick. And then we can start working on Turbo iOS. Oh, and let's also set the root of the application so that we don't just see the Rails logo. So to do all of this, let's first open up the code. So I'll do this in Visual Studio Code Editor. Add up, And then to start, let's set the root. So I'll navigate over to the config routes.rb. And then inside of here, I'm just gonna uncomment this last line they already have the root, which is going to post index. Okay, and then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to that post show page. So to do that, we'll go to the app views and then the post folder go over to the show page. And you'll see inside of here, they're actually rendering post, which that is going to render the underscore post partial. So we have to go in here if we wanna change that image. Now inside of here, you'll see there's this image label. So I'll actually just delete that. And then I'll change this link to to an image tag and then I'll also just have to instead of just adding all like this stuff delete it so that we're just passing in the post image to the image tag and then we can still have this if because if it doesn't exist then we don't want to show the image all right and now we have to restart the server real quick but then everything should be looking good so we restart and now we see that we're on this we have this blog app set up Everything looks good. All this image is pretty huge. So why don't we add some styling just to make that a little bit smaller. So I'll go in here, I'll add a class and I'll just do a width 40, which is gonna be actually pretty small. So reload, yeah, it's pretty small, but that's fine. Then we can show it, we can go back to post. Yeah, everything's looking good. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the turbo iOS section so we have an ios app for this that's running off the back end so to do that it's also very easy we're just going to open up xcode now that we have xcode opened 
we're going to click create new project and then right here what you're going to want to do is make sure you have the ios selected up here and then just choose the default app press next you're gonna to have to give it a product name so i'll just call this strata submit uh, and then you also want to set the organization identifier uh, sometimes if you don't have a team set up you need to configure this first before you can actually like create the app i don't know if that's important though i don't really remember and then the interface see it's on swift ui by default you want to change that to storyboard if it's swift ui you're going to have the wrong files you're going to be all confused so make sure it's on storyboard that's important and then we can just press next you're going to need a location to save it to so i actually already have a folder in documents called turbo ios apps that i created to store all my apps and i'll press create and just like that we have our ios app set up now it doesn't have turbo ios yet so to install turbo ios as a dependency uh, just make sure that you're clicking on this top folder up here and then you'll see this type of screen but we're going to have the target selected so we need to actually click on the project right here and then you have all of these options so then we can go over to package dependencies and here's where we're going to add the package so just press that plus icon and then we're going to need to add turbo ios so to add it you actually are going to use the package url up here so just github.com slash hotwired slash turbo ios add package and just like that we have turbo ios in our app and from here we just need to go to the scene delegate file and we need to add the turbo ios uh, template like the base template so to get that you go to the github for turbo ios so you can just look up turbo ios quick start and you should that should be the first thing that pops up quick start guide i'll click right here and then you'll see there's this example code which is like the the most basic turbo ios app that you can make so i'll go back in here i'll replace this whole file with this content so we have our scene delegate and then we have a few other things going on here so let's test it out first of all so i'll just press play by the way it's normal for this to take a really long time and make sure that you're looking up here and you'll see that it's still like in progress just installing setting up so whenever i'm building turbo ios apps i always have something else to do at the same time like i'll be making music or chilling and then just wait for it to load because this takes forever but once it finally it does install it's a lot uh, faster to to make your changes and everything all right now that the app has loaded you'll see it's actually the turbo native demo and that's because the url we're starting at is going to look turbo native dot glitch so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly change this to use our app so to do that we can just well, first i'll just stop this i guess and then i'll change the url uh, from https to http and i'll change this whole url to localhost colon 3000 and with those changes now it will load our local app so i'll go ahead and rebuild our project okay so i have loaded up the app again with the new url and everything's looking good we already have our app here it's mobile responsive it's showing up now one thing is we still have this issue with the back button see this always happens with the starter code but i'll show you how to fix that really quick so that you don't have the back button pop up wherever you go because it basically just indefinitely adds back buttons uh, which is kind of annoying so what we'll do to fix that is We'll come over here and we'll move this view controller so inside the visit the reason why this is happening is because we're creating a new view controller every time we click on a link and it does this visit method it creates a view controller and then it pushes it to the stack uh, which creates this whole history of visits so what we'll do is we'll take this view controller and i'll move it up to the top next to navigation controller also we don't have the url so i'll delete that and then we'll set it down here later and i'll also take the pushing and we're only going to push it one time and we'll do it inside of the scene function this is like the initial function when the app loads so right before we visit our like the main url we're going to push that view controller and then finally in the visit function 
we can just set the visitable URL to URL. And this is what will update that single view controller. And then we can visit the view controller. All right, so that will fix our problem there. And I'll just go ahead and reload. All right, so now we're here. I'm gonna test this out. Let's click show post. And just like that, everything's working perfect. So then it brings us to the point of this video. I want to use Strata to make this experience better. Now, what experience you may say? You see this button at the bottom? This is like fine. You know, it's fine for now to click the button here. But let's say we have a huge post in the body section. Like, let me do an example. Let me go get some lorem ipsum. Yeah, see this huge text? Now, if we were going to go find that submit button, it would just take forever to get down here to update the post. So the question is, how can we show a native submit button? And then we might even handle the new post and putting that up in the tab bar too. Okay, so I'm gonna be following the Strata section of the Hotwire handbook. So they've added this to the Hotwire website where previously it was just about Hotwire and Turbo. They had some examples of how to use that. But now they have this whole section on Strata, which is pretty awesome. And actually the example is what we're trying to do here, which is putting the submit button up in a native submit. So I'll just take a look and see what they're doing. So they have this form with a button, which is what we have here. And now they're saying we're going to create a kind of like a stimulus controller, except for it's just going to be different because it's going to come from hotwired strata. And then we're also going to add our uh, submit and then I guess bridge title. So I'm not really sure what all this means, but let's get to that. So we're going to go into Visual Studio Code and we'll get started on this. What I'll do is I'll come over to uh, the app views posts and I'll go to the underscore form partial. And inside of here is where I'll add our data controller. So to do that, I'll go up into the form width and then to add HTML, we have to say HTML and now we can add any like attributes that we want to have. So I actually want to have data. Let's do, I guess I'll do it like this just to make it a little bit faster. Data controller. And we're going to set it to, oh, I need to see what they're doing. Okay. So they say like bridge dash dash form. I'm guessing that's just how they're namespacing it. We might not have to do that, but it goes in the bridge folder, form controller JS. Okay, fine. So we're gonna do data controller bridge dash dash form. And then to make the stimulus controller that is going to associate for this, it's actually not a stimulus controller, it's a Strata controller, I guess. So go to JavaScript controllers, create a folder called bridge. And inside of here, we can create the form let me go back. Do they call it controller? I guess they do controller. Okay. Let's go to VS code. Let's do form controller.js. And then inside of here, I'll just take whatever code they already had right here. So they're importing bridge component. And now we have this class extends bridge component. We have a component form, a target submit. So then to add the target, we would just put it down here on the submit button. So I'll go ahead and do that. What we do is we have a data. I guess it's like bridge dash dash form dash target. This is going to be equal to submit. And that's really all we need. So with the basic form component created, we can now send a message to a corresponding native form component. We'll send the submit button's title as JSON data in the message. So the native button can set the native button's title with the submit title. Okay. So we can also send that as a value. And if we look back up here, the way they're doing it was just data bridge dash title. So they don't even use the double dash. That's kind of interesting. We'll see about that. So what we're going to do is we're already in data. So we're just going to say, I'm not even going to use that. I'm just going to say bridge title like this. 
and I'll set this to what, submit. And inside of our component, I guess we're gonna have a method submit target connected. Okay, so this is actually like part of stimulus. We have these connected callbacks on any of our targets. So that's cool. It's not even like this isn't specific to Strata, to Hotwire Strata. This is just part of stimulus. So we have the connected callback. Then inside of here, I guess we're saying submit button equals new bridge element on the target. And then submit title equals submit button dot title. How does that work if it oh, because it's a bridge element. I guess they like have some sort of accessor on the element. Doesn't really seem like too important, but okay. And then we're saying this dot send connect. We're passing in a submit title. And then we're also at the end, we're passing in a callback. We're just going to click, which means it's going to submit the form when we get that callback response. And now finally we get to the part, we're going to build the native iOS bridge component or not bridge component, but like the form component, I guess we'll go ahead and do that. We'll go over to Xcode and we're going to create this class form component. So we'll do that right here next to all the rest of our classes. We'll just say new file. Make sure it's a Swift file. And then we're going to say form component. Create this. And now right now there's nothing in it. So we're going to take that boilerplate code. Just plop it in. And we have this class form component inherits from bridge component, which I'm guessing we have to import this. It says cannot find bridge component in scope. See, I wonder if we need to add another dependency for strata or if it's just included Strata ios okay so apparently we need to add this other library there actually is some guides on here but i'm just gonna go ahead and start this because i didn't even know they had strata ios and i don't think many people knew about this and then i'll copy the url hotwire strata ios and apparently we have to add that as a dependency too but in the future they might just wrap it up inside of this one but for now we, i guess we have to add two See so Strata iOS, we have to add this package. All right, add the package. And now inside of the form component, we would be able to import the bridge component. Whoops. All right. I don't even know. How do I import again? And see in delegate, see we're just importing turbo. So we probably just import bridge component or maybe we import strata yeah po possibly just import strata i think that looks good we're no longer getting error okay now we'll go back to the strata handbook and then here's actually like the final code i guess now we can implement the code to handle receiving and replying so really we want to take this and put it there so copy this code and then put this inside of that class that we created. Whoops. It's right here for the form component. Plop that in. And then let's just take a quick lo look at this. Uh, first of all, we are getting some errors. Like switch must be exhaustive, which means you need to add a defect without importing modules foundation. So we do need to have foundation. Let's add back foundation. And then we have some more errors. UI bar button item. This is probably from UI kit. So let's import UI kit. And then there, all the errors have disappeared. Now I'm going to take a look at this full class and just try to explain it. So we have this Swift class form component it inherits from bridge component. And then we have the name, which is form. And if you remember back in our stimulus controller, we have the static component equals form. And that's like the thing. This is the identifier that connects them together. So we have the name here and then it matches up with the component name here. Kind of interesting. And then we have this method on receive. It's going to handle incoming messages based on the event. So we have the switch message event case connect. So when we get that connect event, we're just going to run our other method which is handle connect event that we created here. 
Now this isn't important. Obviously we could call this anything we want to, or we could just write the code inside of right here, but they decided to organize it into a method and that's cool. So we have this handle connect event inside of here. We're getting data and then we can do a configure bar button. So that's another function which we created where then we're doing, we're getting a UI bar button item. We also have this private extension. Oh, and this is the message data class. I was looking for that before and see, it's literally just a decodable type of thing. I don't know what the decodable class is. Let's look that up real quick. Swift decodable, a type that can decode itself from an external represent. So I guess it could be any, it could be an array. It could like basically anything. It'll just try to figure out what it is and decode it. So I'm going to go back to the scene delegate and take a look at what's going on here. So I don't see anything for Strata yet. So we actually probably have to set that up. Uh, so let's go to Strata iOS. All right, this is cool. They have a page about installing Strata. This part's actually for our Rails app. So by default, you have Stimulus, but I don't think you have Strata. I'm gonna take a look at our import map setup. So to do that, you go into config import map.rb. And as you can see, there's nothing for hotwired Strata. So I'm gonna quickly add that. So I'll go to the terminal, I'll stop the rail server. And then I'm gonna run that command dot slash bin slash import map pin at hotwired slash Strata. Boom, so now we have Strata inside of our Rails app. I'm gonna start the server again. And we can be confident that on the Rails side, this is going to work. We're gonna send a message over to our Strata app. Somehow, I'll have to look behind the scenes to see like how it actually is installing Strata in your native apps. Go to Hotwired Strata iOS. So I guess for native apps, they don't even have a whole website for it. We have to actually look in the docs. Now create an empty global list of registered component factories. So we have a reference. You'll need to populate this list with each bridge component that your app supports. So I guess we create a bridge component plus app, why plus app? Let's go to Xcode. I guess we have to create a registry of our uh, Strata components. So create a new file, Swift file, bridge component, extension, bridge component, static bar, all types. And then we add our registered components here. So I guess I'll add the form component. And then possibly this is good. Cannot find bridge components. We have to import Strata at the top like that. It says cannot convert return expression to return type bridge component dot type. Really? Do I have to use parentheses? No. Bridge component type. Wait, why not? The form component inherits from bridge component. I don't get it. Do we have to say form component dot type? Okay. Uh, since we're, since I don't know what, what's going on, I think the best option is going to go to be, to go to turbo iOS GitHub and then check out the demo app. Right. Or actually we already have the demo app. Why don't we just open up another Xcode window and then I want to open this and hopefully it'll open in a new window. Okay, good. It opened in a new window. So we have the Turbo iOS demo and I'll see how they're handling it. They have a Strata folder, so that's cool. And then inside of the Strata folder, they do have a bridge component plus app. Oh, look, you have to say form component dot self. So we have all these different events for the bridge delegate that we're just like passing over to the delegate. Okay, so let's get into uh setting this up in our app to use this bridge delegate and everything. So to do that, we actually need a custom view controller, I guess. So if you remember inside of here, how I just set view controller to visible view controller, that's not actually going to work for us. So we need to create our own view controller. So I'll just call it web view controller. Now we don't have that class, but we do have a view controller class that we're not actually using right now. So I can just take this and try to rename it, which there's no button to rename. 
<laughs> okay, no, let's just delete that. We're not using that view controller. And then we'll create a new file. It's gonna be a Swift file and we'll call this web view controller. Simple class. And we do wanna import turbo because you need turbo for this visitable view controller that we're inheriting from. Perfect, now we have our own view controller. So we can go back to the scene delegate and yeah, see this will work now. We have view controller is equal to web view controller. And then inside of the web view controller, uh, you can have really just, we have this view did load and then visible did render is another method where we're actually setting the title of our app. So you can set this to whatever you want or you can just delete this and it'll automatically set it to whatever the title of the page you're loading is. So that's kind of cool. All right. So what did, what were they saying? Quick start guide. They say we want to set up one of these files, WK web view configuration plus app. So I'm guessing plus app just means it's, you're just adding an extension only. So I guess it's fine. Let's create a new file. It's going to be a Swift file. And then it's going to be this whatever web view configuration plus app. I'm going to create it and I'll just plop this code that they gave me. Pop that in. It looks like we are going to want Strata for this because we're referencing Strata right here. The bridge component. Uh, the web view configuration, it doesn't know about that. So I guess let's take a look at the demo again. It looks like maybe WebKit. That's what we need because WK means WebKit. WebKit. Hopefully these issues go away. Main actor isolated. All types cannot be referenced. Wait, whoa, why not? From a non-isolated. What the fuck? Uh. <laughs> no, that's kind of annoying. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, let's try to do this. So let web view equals this. Let's put that at the top. And then it looks like we're going to initialize bridge with the web view. We're also going to pass in web view to the session. Like so. Frame dot zero. Okay. We need to import WebKit at the top because we're using the WK. So we need WebKit. We also need bridge. So to get bridge, we have to import Strata. Okay, now this is looking a bit better. There's no errors. Possibly that's the only thing that we need. We're passing the app configuration and everything. So I think that should be fine. Uh, so I'll go back here and see if I'm missing anything. It looks like as long as you can create the web view, initialize the bridge. Now it says implement the bridge destination. We need to add the bridge destination protocol for each visible view controller in your app. So, oh, so that just means inheriting from bridge destination. So that's pretty simple. Just right up here where we're inheriting from these other classes, we're also gonna inherit from the bridge destination. Whoops. And now I'm saying inheriting. I don't know if that's what they call it, but that's what I call it. You know, you have one class, it's taking on the methods of the other ones. So that's what I call inheritance. Although it might not be exactly the same inheritance as we have in Ruby. Huh. So now we have, we need to subclass if you've not already delegate its lifecycle events to the bridge delegate class visitable view controller but yeah we've already done that so not seen delegate but inside of web view controller we have the visitable view controller and i guess that's where we'd add this thing they want a private lazy bridge delegate what a sleepy lazy function <laughs> nah 
Okay, so we have this bridge delegate. The bridge delegate can't find it, so we have to also just import strata at the top. We're passing, passing it visible URL, the destination. So yeah, that's fine. And then all these view life cycles, I guess we're gonna add. So if we take a look, we already have this view did load. See, it's saying super dot view did load. We're also gonna have to do the bridge delegate on view did load. And then for the rest of them, I guess I'll just copy these. Well, really, I guess we'll copy all of them. So all the callbacks, maybe I'll put that underneath visible did render. Visitable. See, this is looking for WK, so we have to also have to import WebKit. It says argument type WebView controller does not conform to bridge destination. So to make that conform, we just have to also inherit up here bridge destination like that. With all these callbacks, it looks like. I might have added an extra bracket somehow. Oops. Did I really? Or am I missing a bracket? First of all, I don't know how these all got out of line. <laughs> all right. Looks like I can do that. I'll just tab all the way back and then tab once and it looks like we do have an extra bracket okay well here we go i think we have the bridge set up correctly and then the next step is just build your first bridge component so we've already done that oh now that was a lot of work just to get set up like that was that was kind of hard now that we do have it set up, it looks like we might be good to go. Although I highly doubt it because this has just been such a pain. It's like we have one error still in the web view configuration. It's still saying about this main actor isolated. Five hours later. I'm gonna go create an issue. Which is, that's why I wanna contribute, teach more people about these frameworks so that we can make this better. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, hey, hopefully somebody helps. All right, guys, I've been looking into this more and I still can't figure out what's going wrong, why I'm getting this issue. So I decided I'm just going to try to not use this method. Although actually, what it looks like is it looks like it's not an issue with really like Strata possibly. For some reason, maybe my method is coming back async. Because there isn't an all types defined in the Strata source code. That's just what they're expecting you to pass in for this method, user agent substring. See, they're just expecting component types, which should be an array of bridge component types. And then it just loops over and does this convenient little thing. So the question is, why does my app think that the bridge components class that I created inside of here, so say non-isolated. And over here, we don't get the error. Really? And we can actually run the app. So it was that simple. You just have to add non-isolated to here, to the bridge. Hey, okay. There we go. And now for the moment of truth, create a new post and uh nothing happened can we at least make sure that our stimulus is working and everything so i'll just go in the browser so i can test via console log if i go to new post i don't see anything so let's go and add like some debugging here actually we don't need to use connect let's just do submit target connected say console.log hello submit button was added 
and then we'll also print out the target and just make sure that everything is showing up correctly. Now if I reload, well, I don't see it, so I guess it's not working correctly. Uh, I was wondering about this, if the stimulus controller just wouldn't load if it's not a Strata native app. I'm guessing that might be what's causing my confusion here. So I should be able to just override this static get and then return true. Like that. And if we go back, hey, okay, sweet. It actually works. Hello, submit. We do get bridge element is not defined. New bridge element does not know about bridge element. Do we need to import that too? Well, it looks like bridge component should already import bridge element. Because it imports the controller too. Oh, look, they do have to import the bridge element to use it in that context, I guess. So we need bridge component and we need bridge element. Although let's just put them, we don't have to have two because that's kind of repetitive when we can put them in the same import statement because it's from the same library. Now we can use bridge element. Sweet. So if we come back here, look at that. So now it is working. I guess it really is just because the stimulus controller won't run if it's not native. Well, now that we know that much, I think we're good to actually go test this in the iOS app. Okay, so I have discovered that the stimulus controller for the bridge is working correctly, right? Because it's not supposed to work on the browser anyways. So from here, I want to test out our app, try to do some debugging, and then see if we can get this feature to work. From what I've seen, we have basically got the setup, but there might be a few more things we need to do. Like, for example, we haven't even added the code to add the UI bar button to the, to the like mobile screen. We haven't even added that code yet, so we're going to need to add that in for sure. Yeah, I'll probably just reference that from the demo. If we come back in here and look on the form component, we can see where that's happening. Down here in the configure bar button, we're creating the item, and then we're setting it on the view controller. So we should be able to do this now. And if you see what view controller is, it's, uh, see we're getting it, it's UI view controller from the delegate destination. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add this in. I'm going to put that up at the top, private var for the view controller. And right here in this method, we can say view controller dot navigation item, right bar item equals uh, this item that we created. Yeah, now it should be set up. All right, so finally the app has loaded up. And we can take a look at this if we go to create new post. Whoa. Well, we got a submit button, but the like the original button is still showing on the page, which is not what's supposed to happen. I think, although, right, we're not actually, we don't have any code to hide the button. When I realized, like, submit target connected, we probably should say, Oh, let's just see if that works actually first and then we can worry about hiding the button. Whoops, so we're gonna go back into Xcode on the simulator. Let's try to create our post. Post Illustrata. And then we were to click the submit button up here. It actually submits the form. That's beautiful. The only thing is now the submit button is like, stays at the top. So that's not good. We're going to have to remove the button now. So probably right here on perform action. Right before we reply, we can remove the button. So you can just literally set it to nil. And this is after you would click on that submit button. Uh, the only other thing is there's like kind of a catch where what if you didn't click the submit button? But let's worry about that after. 
So we're gonna go create new post. So we have that submit button. I'm just like my awesome post. Public posting. Super fun. And then we click submit. Uh, you'll see that it removes the button after you're done. So it's perfect. We are getting like a weird scrolling thing. I don't know, that might be unrelated though. So we get the submit button, we click submit, submits it. But what I was saying is, look, now that we have the submit button, what if we just were to like exit? It still has that submit button saved. So that's no good. So I think for that, we'll just take advantage of the stimulus disconnect function. So disconnect is whenever your stimulus controller gets removed from the page. And then why don't we just send a disconnect message over so we'll go ahead and do that. Stop send. Oops. Just connect. And then I don't think we need any parameters. So you might just wanna send like a empty data. Send the disconnect over. We might not even need to though. And then over on Xcode side, uh, what we'll do is right here in the case, say case disconnect, and then simply set the navigation item to nil. Look at that, and that's pretty simple right there. Let's see how that works. All right, so we can click new post. We get the submit button, but then we press back. Just like that removes the navigation item. What is this perform action and why is it, how does it already know to listen for the UI tab bar item? See, that's kind of interesting to me. Oh, right here. Oh, now I get it. We gave it an action, a perform action. So see, this happens whenever you click on the button. So I didn't even notice that, but that's what's causing all this. So then this is fine. Yeah, we can remove it when we click on the button and then also when we disconnect up here so yeah just like this we have a working strata form the last thing to do really is to in the stimulus controller to hide that button so we can do a target class list add hidden well, that's for tailwind if you're not using tailwind you could do a target style Display equals none. And then both of these would work. I'm using Tailwind, the CSS framework, so there's a hidden class that I can use that also does what I want. And then, so yeah, now what would happen is on the browser, it still works as normal. You can see the link. Then when we go over to Xcode, or when we go over to the iOS app, I mean, we come here and we go and click new post see there's no more submit button at the bottom there's just a submit up here and that's just really cool oh and you notice that it's lowercase it looks kind of weird lowercase and actually it's coming all from the HTML so another cool thing about this is anytime you need to change something like that since we're passing it through directly from the HTML you don't have to submit a change to Apple whenever you want to change your app. See, you just change it like this. If we wanted that submit button to be capitalized, it's coming right from this bridge title. So we just put an uppercase on the submit. And then you don't even need to reload Xcode because since it's coming from the HTML, we don't even need to like restart our project with that change. We just have to reload the page. And then we're getting the new HTML which makes the submit button capital. And yeah, this is just a beautiful experience using stimulus mixed with iOS native functionality. This is awesome. Okay, I love Strata again. Oh, I almost clicked the wrong button. Submit. Oh, that's beautiful. And then let's say we want to do it for this too. Right, for like the post, new post. We could actually do that pretty easily, I think, if we just go to the post index page. And 
and we do that bridge form. So what I'll actually do is I'll do it right here on this div. Or no, I'll do it up on this div actually. Add a data controller. Bridge dash dash form. And then we'll have on this link, we'll add those attributes. So like the target and then also the title that it's gonna use. So do data bridge dash dash form target. We're gonna set that to submit. And we're also gonna have the bridge title. Because that's what we're using. And then we'll just say new post. And then already right off the bat, because because of how simple this JavaScript is, it's that reusable. Like, look, there's nothing specific to, like this doesn't even have to be the form component, but that's just what we called it. All it's doing is it's hiding a link and it's clicking it when you click the native link, which is just beautiful. Uh, so if we go back to that index page, like this is already set up. Let's just go into the simulator again. All right, so we can't see it now because we have to reload the page. But if I refresh, look, just like that, that's amazing. And then see new post up here. And then it gets swapped out for submit. Wow. No, that's beautiful. So we have a really easy new post button up there. I love posting to this app. Wow, this is so cool how easy it was. You just have to remember to submit it up there. This is awesome. You know, there wasn't, there was a few issues that I struggled with, but after I overcame them, it's working really well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and hope you're excited for more videos featuring Strata, the new framework for, well, adding stuff like this into your app. So I hope you guys have a great day and go and mess with Strata. Go create some hybrid mobile apps because this is so much fun.